Hey, future respiratory therapist. We've got a video for you. We're going to continue this series breaking down arterial blood gas interpretations. Now, we know we kind of had a little interruption last week and continuing into this week um, with the um, chaos that's kind of going on in the world right now. But it's okay. We're going to get through it. I also want to let you guys know that starting next week, I'm going to start putting out some scenarios that will hopefully supplement some of your learning so that during these times when you can't go to the actual clinical sites, you can still be learning and assessing and, and kind of getting a taste of clinical decision-making abilities. So that's coming next week. For this week, we're getting out metabolic acidosis. We're going to do another one over metabolic alkalosis. And then we're going to wrap up with a mixed acidosis where you have the metabolic component and the respiratory component, both of them causing an acidosis. But today, it's all about metabolic acidosis. Now, to get started in this, here's how it goes. We're going to break it down just like we have the other ones. Start with the normals and tell you and show you each level of the metabolic disturbance that could cause an acidosis. So, we know we have pH, we know we have CO2, and we know we have bicarb. Okay, now we know, just like we do, that this is normal, okay? Bicarb 24, CO2 of 40, and your pH is 7.40, okay? Now, what happens with the metabolic acidosis is one of two things. Either the body physically loses bicarb during, let's say, times such as a severe prolonged diarrhea. Uh, bicarb is absor absorbed um, along the GI tract and with, with prolonged and severe diarrhea, this, this absorption doesn't happen and so you actually lose bicarb from the body. So your bicarb becomes depleted. Okay. Now the other thing that happens when uh, you have a metabolic acidosis is if it's not the actual loss of bicarb, you may actually still have the bicarb uh, present, but it's it's occupied by a buildup of non-volatile acids. Now, when we say non-volatile acids, we're talking about things that you have to use the anion gap to assess and to find out if that's uh, what's happening or not. Things like lactic acidosis, things like ketoacidosis, those type of things would be uh, examples of, of uh, increases in non-volatile acids that are occupying your bicarb um, reflecting a low bicarb on your blood gas. So this is what it looks like, okay? So let's just say that you have a bicarb of 13, I'm gonna draw a line right here. Bicarb of 13, uh, your CO2 initially stays normal, okay? This is a, a part of the compensatory mechanism, but in the initial phases, your CO2 stays normal until your pH goes acidotic, and your pH is 7.15. Now, this is an uncompensated metabolic acidosis okay so uncompensated metabolic acidosis it's a metabolic acidosis because this is the problem causer so metabolic here it's an acidosis because we're on the acidotic side of the pH and it's uncompensated because our CO2 is still normal okay so this is uncompensated metabolic acidosis. Now remember, I just kind of said this a second ago, but I'm going to recap it for you. Do not make the same mistakes that I made for the first five or six years of my role as a licensed respiratory therapist when I was out there telling doctors, why don't we give, why don't we give bicarb? Why don't we give bicarb? My answer to this was always give bicarb. You only give bicarb when the body has lost bicarb. So back to the diarrhea example, right? That would be an appropriate time to give bicarb. Well, how would I know that, Joe? Well, you do your anion gap. If your anion gap is normal, then you, you can give bicarb. But if your anion gap is high, then that's when you have to treat the problem. If it's lactic acid due to tissue hypoxia, then you need to focus on oxygenation and perfusion of the tissues. If it's uh, DKA, such as uh, diabetic ketoacidosis, then you need to give insulin and fluids, right? And you got to treat the problem. Giving bicarb won't fix the problem. You can give bicarb to somebody who presents with lactic acidosis and tissue hypoxia, and it'll make your pH come up a little bit. But it doesn't fix the tissue hypoxia, and that's what you have to understand. 
when it comes to uncompensated metabolic acidosis or really any metabolic acidosis, you need to ask yourself, what's the problem? Have I gained non-volatile acids or have I lost bicarb? If I've lost bicarb, my anion gap will be normal and I can give bicarb. If I've gained non-volatile acids, my anion gap is going to be high and giving bicarb won't fix the problem. Now, if you haven't seen my anion gap video, I highly encourage you to do so. I will link to it at the top of the screen um, and, and, and we'll go from there. You can watch that, okay, because it's, um, it's, it's a good video on breaking down what the anion gap is, how to calculate it, and the formula and all that stuff, okay? Now, from here... The body is going to try to compensate for this metabolic acidosis. It's going to do that by getting rid of acid. Now, to do that, it's going to hyperventilate our CO2 down. So let's just say that our bicarb stays 13, okay, and our CO2 goes down to 30, and our pH goes up to 725. Now, this is a partially compensated or some say compensating metabolic acidosis okay it's an acidosis because we're still on the acidotic side it's metabolic because the bicarb is causing the acidosis and it's partially compensated because our co2 has gone down which is helping pull our ph up but it hasn't gotten it back into the ballpark of normal yet, which is why you can't call it fully compensated. This is what gets a lot of students confused. It's like, well, why is it not compensated if the CO2 is down? The answer is because it's not within the normal range yet. The body is only compensated when the pH falls between 7.35 and 7.45. That's it. If it's not within that normal range, then it's not a fully compensated gas. If it's outside of 735 and outside of 745, then you have either an acidosis or an alkalosis caused by either a respiratory component or a metabolic component, and you might have the other component compensating for that. So you just have to look at it and see. In this case, our CO2 is clearly down, trying to bring our pH up, which is down from this low bicarb. Okay, again, what's causing a bicarb to be low? Anion gap will tell you the answer along with patient presentation and history. Okay, so you got to figure that out. Now, when we get to the point to where we are fully compensated, you're going to see that our CO2 continues to go down. Our bicarb is still a problem. We got to get that fixed. But our pH comes back into normal range. Okay, so this is a fully compensated metabolic acidosis. Why is it a metabolic acidosis? Why is it not a res why is it not a fully compensated respiratory alkalosis? If our CO2 goes down, then our pH should go up and our bicarb goes down to pull it back in. That's true. What makes this a fully compensated metabolic acidosis as opposed to a fully compensated respiratory alkalosis? Well, the answer is in your pH. 736 is on the acidotic side. So if so if you're if you're compensated on the acidotic side, then you have to look at the component that is causing an acidosis. And in that case, it's the the bicarb. Your bicarb being low brought your pH down. But your patient was able to blow their CO2 down enough to get this back up into normal range. That makes it a fully compensated metabolic acidosis. Okay? Now, like I said, anytime, this is what, if you're taking notes and you need to write stuff down, this is what you need to write down. If you understand those three, those three interpretations uncompensated your co2 is going to be normal acidotic ph low bicarb partially compensated metabolic acidosis low ph low bicarb low co2 because it's trying to compensate fully compensated your ph is in the normal range on the acidotic side low bicarb because that's what's causing acidosis and a low co2 if you understand all of those things okay then 
your next question is, is okay, don't forget this. And I'm going to say it one more time for you because it's this important. Okay, it's seriously that important to understand that anytime you're dealing with a metabolic acidosis, do not be that respiratory therapist out there trying to treat every metabolic acidosis, whether it's uncompensated, partially compensated, or fully compensated by giving bicarb. It's not the right answer. Always, 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 any single time you see a metabolic acidosis, assess your anion gap and figure out what the problem is and then treat the problem. And sometimes it may be to give bicarb but not all the times, okay? So hey guys, this is metabolic acidosis. I hope it helps, I hope it makes sense. For those of you learning blood gases right now, I really hope this helps. Um, if you have any questions over any of this, please uh, put them in the comments below. If you appreciated this video and you're like, hey, I kinda like this, uh, then please do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and be sure and tell on, turn on all notifications so you know when I upload a video. I told you later this week there's gonna be metabolic alkalosis. Then there's going to be mixed acidosis and mixed alkalosis. And then next week we're jumping into some clinical scenarios to keep you guys sharp while you can't actually go to your clinicals. So again, I appreciate you watching. I hope everybody's having a, a, a great day and I hope everybody's being safe. Best wishes.